Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duist, I'm here today, back with another Black Desert video. Today's video, we'll be taking a look at the roadmap for the remainder of 2021 as far as Black Desert goes. So all the new things that are going to get added, all the important stuff that you want to know about, and all of the stuff that was just announced at the Heidel Ball. So if you don't have four and a half free hours to watch this thing, I got you covered. We'll pick out all the important stuff. Now quickly before we get into the video though, if you're new to the channel, new to Black Desert, or you have been watching videos on the channel and still haven't subscribed yet, please consider it. I'm pushing for 100k this year, would love to hit it, and would really appreciate your help. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. And I'm going to start off by telling you that I have the full roadmap, I believe every single thing that was mentioned in the roadmap, along with the timestamps that are relevant to the live stream. So the live stream is linked below if you want to watch the full live stream as well as timestamps in the live stream. So you can pull up this little Google Doc here and navigate to whatever you want to see more on. Otherwise, I'm just going to rip through this information here. So the first important thing that came through is a code, and all of these codes are going to be linked in the description below, so you can just redeem them in-game should you desire. That is the escape key on the keyboard, adventure support, which is behind my webcam, and use coupon. Just copy-paste from the description, drop it right here into this box. So I'm going to skip over all of those tabs, but those are the time marks where they're announced. So the first important thing out of the roadmap that a lot of people will be concerned about is the release of the summer season that will be starting on June 29th. So for all of you that have been waiting for a new summer season to start, this is the time. June 29th, we have it coming. There's going to be a growth pass after the graduation on the season server. This is going to provide you both long and short-term tasks. Short-term tasks are going to help you get into the game and try out different mechanics. Long-term tasks are going to be focused more on gear progression. As far as upgrading your gear goes, it's going to be the equivalent difficulty as it was for upgrading Tuvala. They heard people complaining about it and they said, nah fam, you're going to keep struggling. And the final important thing from this little bit of information was that there is an EXP share system that's going to be going on, as well as a gear tagging sort of system for season characters to a normal character, so you can level up two characters at once, is what it sounds like they were hinting at. This was based on all the complaints that you could only have one season character, so they're going to let you do something to get yourself two of them. Sort of. And then there's one more important thing about the season servers that's going to make a lot of people happy, and that is the fact that season servers are coming to consoles as well. So that's right, console players, you finally have a season server, and you can finally watch my videos and stop being mad at me. Next up in the Heidel Ball, we have the personal server system that's going to be added, so you plus 30 of your friends can run around and do whatever you want in Black Desert, assuming one of you completes a challenge or a special event and wins that sort of content to be given access to these servers. There will be 20 of them on launch. No further information as to how to get into them beyond that. Do note, though, that some sort of personal server system is coming. Next thing that was announced were mansions releasing on July 15th, as you can see right there. So mansions are coming to the game. First one's going to be in Heidel. Just outside of it, you'll be able to decorate the inside and the outside. Uh, a lot of people have been looking forward to this system, and it is finally coming. The Atraxian Dungeon will be releasing on July 21st for the rest of the world. So right now it's only in Korea. Uh, global release on July 21st for the Atraxian Dungeon. The second dungeon will be coming July 29th, it's an undersea one, and it's slightly more difficult. This is the global lab release for it, not the full-on release for the world. So July 29th, we'll get our first glimpse at the new dungeon. Next up, we are getting a knowledge-based card game added to the game, so you can play against NPCs as well as other players. It's going to be like a little, like, straight-up battle card sort of knowledge-based game, which is pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of, like, Gwent and the Witcher, even though it's not going to be the same mechanics whatsoever. Just the same sort of idea, a little side card game that you can play based on your knowledge and whatnot that you obtain through the game. There is going to be a ranked system for this, but it is designed to be just a fun little side activity to do. So that is releasing on August 12th. August 12th is the release date for that game mode. August 19th is going to be bringing two new Red Battlefield zones. First is Serendia Plains, second is Valencia City. So as you already know, those two different regions in the game, um, that'll be the territory for the fights. Big change coming from that is that there will be certain servers that have the camouflage effect from the camouflage outfits disabled in Red Battlefield um, to make people a bit easier to see. So if you've bought the outfit, you'll want to make sure to play on the servers that have it enabled. Um, if you don't have it and don't want to deal with it, then there are these servers where it is disabled. So um, there is that. Moving on to August 26th, we are going to have a ton of updates coming to the game. So first is the Terror of the Deeps location. It is a single player grinding area um, that is focused on progressing. So we've talked about this in previous videos and previous patch notes and previous other sorts of videos like this one. Seems like a cool new little area for PvE players. But the other big update that's coming on the 26th is a PvP season. So these are going to be servers that have gear-capped stats. Looks like the AP and DP of those servers is going to be limited to 620. And as the PvP seasons progress, they're going to add a little bit more and a little bit more stats each time. So that's 620 AP plus DP. Additionally, there are going to be new game modes added as well. So we have the 10v10 ranked system that we were talking about in the Calpheon Ball as well. 
So the 10v10 ranked system is you get your team of friends together, 10 of you, and you play against other teams of 10. There's a ranking system. There will be a Champions League of the best teams from each of the regions that will play against each other. However, NA and EU is excluded from that at the moment, as well as several other servers. Seems to be based only around the Asian servers at the moment. However, it's still something fun to look forward to. In addition to this, there's going to be ranked 1v1 and 2v2 and 3v3 game modes that you can play as well. So they're adding a ranked PvP system there for a lot of people that have been asking for it. Depending on your rank, you're going to get different rewards at the end of whatever season is being determined. And PvP season servers are going to last between one and three months. They are also contemplating bringing in PvP exclusive gear. So if you want to go through upgrading stuff again, you sure can. September 2nd is bringing out the Mythical DNA that can run on the water. So a lot of people have been waiting for that horse. So September 2nd for that one. And September 30th brings us our next major change to the game systems, the one that I've been waiting for a lot, a rework to the trading system. So the trade skill is going to be reworked pretty much entirely. First thing they're going to do is market prices are going to be synced with current selling prices to allow for marginal trading, which is pretty cool. Second thing that's going to happen is that you can join different trade guilds around the world of Black Desert. Um, these trade guilds can be cooperated with or competed against. It'll allow you to earn sort of influence with the guild. You can rank up within the guild, allowing you to buy new things and sell new things, access to different trade routes and things like that. You can then become the head of a merchant guild should you desire. And in addition to all of this little rework, you will also have the ability to enhance wagons to permanent versions such that they don't disable or fall apart as you use them. You'll also be able to use multiple camels for desert trading to create a caravan like you see right here. And they're looking at ways to make it feel more immersive while you're doing the trading, like you're actually riding on the horse or the wagon or something like that. They also plan to extend this to maritime trade, but they don't have a, an ETA for that at the moment. On October 14th, we're going to be getting the Elvio Realm for the Calpheon regions. The gear cap on this is 290 to 340 AP, which is absurdly high. However, you're going to be able to use weather effects to your advantage to be able to reach those AP numbers. Additionally, they're doing something with green weapons that'll allow you to boost your stats. To make this region more engaging, they're going to add better AI or different mechanics to the mobs that you face in the area as well. And that was pretty much it for that information. Next up was a long section about how they're going to be rebooting different characters in the game. So older classes, 17 of the older classes, didn't say which ones though, are going to be getting larger scaled reworks. What they're going to do with this is they're going to look at hit detection, accuracy, and range changes to tons of different skills on all sorts of different classes. They're going to alter skills to better demonstrate the class's concept. Some classes' unused skills, or skills that they don't use very frequently, are going to be reworked entirely to uh, help fit in with this new concept. reason they're doing this is because they know that they keep adding new characters. They want to make sure the old ones are still fun to play as well. And speaking of new characters, they full-on plan to keep adding new characters, so don't worry about that. They're going to keep them coming. But the time for this rework or character reboot that they have listed here is the middle of October through the beginning of November. They showed off a new tutorial when you start the game. This is going to be coming out at some point. No release date on this, but it did look pretty neat. Timestamp is in that note sheet once again. They're also going to be doing fully voiced NPCs for main story quest lines as well, which is pretty cool. And the final thing that was full on announced in this is a new pen accessory event that is active that you'll be able to play starting in a couple of weeks here. And there's already a note page out about this, but basically the TLDR for this event is that you're going to be getting these Moonlight Black Stones right here. They're used to upgrade an accessory of your choice, either a Narc Ear, a Tungrid Earring, or a Ring of the Crescent Guardian. Upgrading those all the way up to the pen stage will set you back a bunch of these. The ETA for this is roughly three to six months per the sheet or per the uh, live stream right here. So you got a long time to work on these. But at the end of it, you will have a full on pen accessory, which is pretty cool. So you'll have a series of daily quests and whatnot that you can do that allow you to get powders, which you turn into those stones and yada, yada, yada. Pretty neat event for you that you can slowly work towards and feel progression as you continue to work through it. The entire cost of that project is going to be the total of 10 billion silver worth of materials. So you will be having to put significant investment into it. It's not like it's completely free. So that's going to do it for the roadmap. Those are all of the things coming to the game. However, there's a few more important Q&A things that I think a lot of people will be interested in. First is that there's going to be tier 5 pets coming at some point here, so you do have a higher tier pet coming. Um, there's going to be a new ship, the Fury of Dreadnought, at some point, and the Fallen God armor next piece is going to be the helmet. So there's a lot of people that are probably interested in those three things, just based on my viewer base and uh, all your guys' information and comments that you leave me. So figured I'd give you those. Once again, the link to this full-on live stream is in the description below. You can watch it. I have the sheet right here that has all of the timestamps on it that I just mentioned, so you can backtrack it. 
And that's just going to leave one more thing to talk about, and that is going to be the new Pirate Lady class, the Corsair. Um, they released the gameplay trailer of this, and I can say that this class is way too mechanically involved for me. But of course, I'll have to play and try and teach you how to play the class, but just look at how much movement there is. Two weapons, it looks like you have your typical pirate sort of cutlass-like weapon thing. You've also got a magical water blob that like turns you all into water, and you fly around and do all sorts of crazy stuff. And yeah, it's pretty nuts. So there's also the origin little story right here that you can watch if you should desire. We have the character pre-creation event, the season pre-creation event right now, starting on June 23rd, so that'll be coming out in a couple of days, specific for this class, of course. And that, my friends, is all of the information from the Heidel Ball. So I know there's a lot to take in here, but your TLDR is that we have a lot of cool changes coming, a lot of stuff to look forward to, and I'm pretty excited for it. So anyway, guys, what do you think in the comment section below? Go ahead and let me know what you think. And uh, I'd love to see your thoughts. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching once again. I'll see you at the next live stream over on Twitch, the next YouTube video right here, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.